Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Dare to Game video. Today we are going to be taking a look at my currently most anticipated game of the coming year, Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I'm actually pretty surprised to hear myself saying that, but barring a Fable game that actually looks good, Avowed as long as it isn't just Outer Worlds with Castles, Elder Scrolls 6, or Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, nothing else currently out there excites me as much as Hogwarts Legacy does. It looks really good. Of course, they haven't showed us all that much yet about it, and uh, I like it that way because there's nothing quite as bad as a game that shows off everything about the game before it even releases. Uh, but between the reveal trailer, the state of play, the common room tours, and the new Dark Arts trailer, I'm actually pretty intrigued. It looks like they are getting a solid balance of lore and gameplay. The game looks huge, and like they have very carefully considered everything that is going into it. So currently, I believe it's very likely to be the best game of 2023. Which would be something new for the Harry Potter world of video games, as they have never managed an interesting game before. Now for me personally, I like the world of Harry Potter. I read all the books once or twice while I was in school, and they were okay. I read them after having been a Tolkien fan for a long time, so in comparison, they barely paled. But they were entertaining enough and pretty memorable. I've of course also seen all of the movies, probably more times than I would like to, but some of the other members of my family are very into them, and so they would play frequently in the house growing up. Altogether, I would describe myself as a fan, but certainly not a Potterhead. But today, all of that changed, as I learned my house, my Patronus, and my wand. That's right. I saw that we could figure this stuff out before the game released, and then link the accounts, and then we would have all of that figured out right away when the game launches. So that way, we have our lore-accurate houses, wand, etc., before even starting the game, and risking getting placed into the wrong house, or worse, having the wrong wand. Now, to be fair, I don't know how much of this would have actually mattered in the game, but it was fun to figure it out. So, I'll have a link in the description to the website to do all of this, but now, I'll just show you my stuff. And so, to get to the website, you just go to www.wizardingworld.com slash legacy connect. And if you do that, it'll bring you through a couple steps. So the first one will be log in, and if you, like I, did not have a account at thewizardingworld.com, which may be shocking, it wasn't for me. I was like, oh yeah, I've never even heard of this site before. So it's pretty easy. You just create an account, and then you can get sorted into your house and discover your wand, and then you link this account to your Warner Brothers account. And it, again, same, I did not have a Warner Brothers account, or Warner, Brother, Warner Brothers Games account, so I just created one and linked it to this, and Steam, and Twitch, and Discord, and Google, and you know, all the things that you can link it to. Uh, so once you've done that, you get sorted, you get your wand, and you link it to that account. That way, when you get the game, or when you install it, as long as it's linked to the same Warner Brothers account, then you will have your wand from here, your house from here, and you will also get access to the special robes and mask thing that they're given out. So, uh, that's basically the process of doing it. It's pretty easy, doesn't take very long, actually kind of fun. I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan. Like I said, so the website doesn't hold that much of interest to me, but like I saw on there that you could listen to at least the first audiobook was on here. So if you just want to listen to it, if you've never read the books before and you want to familiarize yourself like that's on here, there's also quizzes, puzzles, all sorts of stuff. So if you're a big Harry Potter fan and you're not familiar with the Wizarding World website, then, you know, it's probably going to be pretty interesting for you. But yeah, now I'm just going to show you the stuff that I got. And so this is my home page. And as you can see, uh, I got sorted into Gryffindor. Now, I wasn't hoping for Gryffindor. I was, uh, I honestly probably my first pick would have been Ravenclaw just based on what I know about them. Uh, but unfortunately, I ended up getting Gryffindor. So it says, You probably know that some of Gryffindor's most renowned members include Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter. But did you know that the Sword of Gryffindor was made a thousand years ago by goblins? Or that Head of House Minerva McGonagall's hobbies include correcting articles in Transfiguration Today and supporting the Montrose Magpies, which I assume is a Quidditch team? Uh, shows us some fellow Gryffindors. Super basic. Just the three main characters from the show. There's our, our a message from your prefect. Congratulations, I'm Prefect Percy Weasley. And I'm delighted to welcome you to Gryffindor House. Our emblem is the lion, the bravest of all creatures. Our house colors are scarlet and gold, and our common room lies up in Gryffindor uh, Tower. That's the whole 
spiel there about the house I'm in. So obviously the four houses are Gryffindor, uh, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin. Not a whole lot to say about it. If you're familiar with Harry Potter, you're probably familiar with the houses. So yeah, the first thing you can do on this site is get sorted into your house, and then that'll be the house that you play as in the game. So in Hogwarts Legacy, I'm going to be in Gryffindor. Now this one isn't uh, a part of the, the game connection, at least as far as I know, but you can also find out what your Patronus is. And so I did the little test to do that, and it turns out mine is apparently a fox terrier and so it says the patronus turned it was cantering back towards harry across the still surface of the water it wasn't a horse it wasn't a unicorn either it was a stag it was shining brightly as the moon above uh so that's from the prisoner of azkaban pretty fun i guess and kind of unique and then i looked it up just to see what the heck that means about me and so it says here on uh mugglenet.com it says fox terrier this is a small yet fearless dog that loves being outside and around people if you have this patronus you are spunky and loyal they work well in teams, so when teaming up with other Patronuses, you can't be beaten. So what I take away from that is that I am spunky and loyal. So that's fun. Uh, but yeah, that's my Patronus. And then possibly most exciting about the whole thing, my wand. So my wand. Now this isn't what I was hoping for because before I took this test, because I didn't know what the process of finding your wand was going to be, so I watched, I think it was the channel was uh, Harry Potter Theory on YouTube. I watched a video about the cores in the woods and what they all mean. And so I was hoping for a red oak wand with a dragon heart string core because i was like you know that'd be awesome first of all from where i live in the world red oak red oaks are all over the place so it ties in there plus they're apparently the best wood for dueling so i was like you know that's what i want but i did the little test thing in here and it didn't let me pick it so this is what i was assigned because apparently the wand chooses the wizard as we all know so i have a hazel hazel wood with a dragon core 13 inches and unyielding flexibility so it says, Hazelwood, a sensitive wand, hazel often reflects its owner's emotional state and works best for a master who understands and can manage their own feelings. That's true about me. I guess I'm pretty good at managing my own feelings. Others should be very careful handling a hazel wand if its owner has recently lost their temper or suffered a serious disappointment because the wand will absorb such energy and discharge it unpredictably. The positive aspect of a hazel wand more than makes up for such minor discomforts, however, for it is capable of outstanding magic in the hands of the skillful and is so devoted to its owner that it often wilts which is to say that it expels all of its magic and refuses to perform often necessitating the extraction of the core and its insertion into another casing if the wand is still required uh, at the end of the master's life so if you die a hazel wand will often just stop working so someone else can't pick up your wand and work it the wand will be so upset that its owner died that it will just stop working. Uh, if the core is unicorn hair, which mine isn't, mine's a dragon heartstring core, but if the core is a unicorn hair, however, there is no hope and the wand will almost certainly have died. So hazel wands also have the unique ability to detect water underground and will emit silvery, tear-shaped puffs of smoke if passing over concealed springs and wells. So pretty fun there. And so there's uh, the Ollivander quote. Uh, I looked it up and I could only find one person in the whole Harry Potter schmagaggle, you know, the books, the movies, everything, that uses a hazel uh, wood wand, and it was Sybil Trelawney, the crazy divination professor. So, like my least favorite character from the entire series. Uh, so that's fun. I have the same wand wood as her. A dragon core. Uh, so I have a dragon heartstring core in mine, and it says, as a rule, dragon heartstrings produce wands with the most power and which are capable of the most flamboyant spells. Dragon wands tend to learn more quickly than other types. While they can change allegiance if won from their original master, they always bond strongly with the current owner. The dragon wand tends to be easiest to turn to the dark arts, although it will not incline that way of its own accord. It is also the most prone of the three cores to accidents, being somewhat temperamental. So apparently I've got a real temperamental wand here. Hazelwood and dragon heartstring cores can be somewhat temperamental, but they can also produce apparently really powerful stuff so who knows maybe i got a really good wand uh, i'm not sure but it seems that way my uh wand length is 13 inches same as uh, a different length that i like to tell people about uh but it says the following notes on wand length and flexibility are taken from notes on the subject by mr garrick olivander wand maker most wands will be in the range of between 9 and 14 inches while i have sold extremely short wands 8 inches and under and very long wands over 15 inches these are exceptionally rare in the latter case a physical peculiarity demanded the excessive wand length. However, abnormally short wands usually select those in whose character something is lacking, rather than because they are physically undersized. Many small witches and wizards are chosen by longer wands. So, 
I got a 13 inch wand. Uh, that's on the higher end of average for wand length. Don't let anyone tell you any differently. And as everyone knows, it's more about girth anyway. But yeah, so I got 13 inches. And for flexibility, I got unyielding flexibility. Same as Bellatrix Lestrange, so that's fun. The following notes on wand length and flexibility are taken, blah, blah, blah. We already read that part. Wand flexibility or rigidity denotes the degree of adaptability and willingness to change possessed by the wand and owner pair. Although, again, this factor ought not to be considered separately from the wand wood, core, and length, nor the owner's life experience and style of magic, all of which combine to make the wand in question unique. I've got a temperamental wand that's capable of great magic, is on the longer end of the spectrum, and is not flexible at all, so it's a lot like me. So I guess the test did a pretty good job of... of adding it to me. To be fair, if I, if I was a little bit more self-critical of myself and capable of introspection, uh, I would probably agree that they did a real good job of matching the wand to me because a lot of that stuff just seems to match my personality. But that's the whole spiel. And so if you've gone through, got sorted into your house, got your wand, the Patronus is just an extra thing because as far as I know that doesn't transfer into the game, then you'll be able to link your account to your Warner Brothers account and then when you start the game you will have the fanatic house robes. And so once you've done all that, you can get a free wallpaper, which I'm currently using as my background on the computer because I like it. It's uh, a picture of Hogsmeade, it appears to be, because I can read at least two of the signs and I see Zonko's, which is a joke shop that exists in Hogsmeade, and also the Three Broomsticks, which is, of course, everyone's favorite wizarding pub in Hogsmeade. So it's a pretty fun wallpaper. You can use it on any of your devices. I just have it on my computer, obviously. Once you've linked your accounts, you can bring your wizarding world identity into the game. Live the unwritten representing your true Hogwarts house and using your own wand. So I get to bring my Hazel wand and the fact that I'm in Gryffindor. You also get to enjoy exclusives in-game rewards. So explore Hogwarts in an exclusive house, fan, attic, school robe, and collect a beaked skull mask. So it kind of looks like a uh, Death Eater mask, or maybe like a precursor to the Death Eaters. The robes are interesting. They've got a light gray on one side, and then have your house colors on the other part. Well, it kind of looks like house colors, but not quite. Because I'm assuming this one here is Gryffindor, because it's got the scarlet, but then it's got blue up here instead of gold. And this one is yellow, so I'm guessing Hufflepuff, but that looks like teal up there. Then that must be Ravenclaw, and this must be Slytherin. So, interesting that they didn't choose to go with the direct house colors for the two colors and that I mean I guess the only one that I know for sure is Gryffindor which is uh, scarlet and gold and this one is scarlet and blue I don't know if I don't think Slytherin I think Slytherin is like silver and green Hufflepuff I have no idea and Ravenclaw is I don't know blue and something uh, but yeah, the gray looks a little weird. It, it makes it look like maybe you're going to stand out a little bit in Hogwarts. I'm, it's cool that I'll have it just because I'm a collector and I like to have everything that exists in a game. But I don't know that I'll wear it because I feel like I'll just want to be immersed in the school a little bit better. And I feel like wearing the regular robes is probably going to be a better way to do that. Uh, these kind of look like they should be Quidditch robes, if I'm being honest. But anyway, that's the rewards for doing it. It's kind of a fun thing. doesn't take that long. And you get to go into the game with your very own personalized wand and house that's selected based on your personality. They've just got a little test that uses a little bit of subliminal psychology type stuff to figure it all out, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. So, that's the whole spiel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you really liked what we did here. Uh, and if you're interested in trying this out, I definitely recommend it. I'm pretty excited for this game. I'm probably going to cover any other news and updates that come out. Hopefully it actually releases when they say it will in February uh, and doesn't get delayed again. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.